We used to think in the summer it was a lovely place to live and then in the winter we used to start to hate it because it was so cold and drafty and, and miserable. The need to improve the energy efficiency and comfort of Britain's existing housing stock is getting ever more urgent to combat fuel poverty and tackle the threat of climate breakdown. Improving the efficiency of our existing housing stock is a lot more difficult than new build. However, the good news is that we can do it. Using the passive house standard methodology, we can bring our housing stock up to 21st century standards. The Passive House Planning Package modelling software is a great design tool to help improve the performance of existing buildings. Many of the Passive House principles can be applied in a retrofit situation. Super insulation, continuity of insulation or minimising thermal bridging, air tightness, ventilation. However, there are limitations when working with existing buildings form factor, or the basic shape of the building, solar gains and orientation. Having built several new passive houses, we've used the methodology and the knowledge that we've built up to retrofit some of these hard to treat Yorkshire stone houses. Let's go and have a look. You might have heard the phrase fabric first in building circles. Simply put, this is to getting the building not to need the energy in the first place. In fact, the cheapest energy we can use is the energy we don't use. We're going to be looking at four key principles of energy efficient refurbishment using examples from our retrofit projects. Obviously, insulation is a big part of these renovation works. And on the walls, we've had to use internal wall strategy. As we're in the Peak District Park here, the planning authorities would never have let us put it outside. Um, so we have to be very careful with which materials we use. In this case, it's diathonite, which is a compound of lime, cork and diatomaceous earth. We sprayed it on in 25 millimetre layers to build up to a total of 100 mil and we've achieved the U values that we were aiming for. Here at the Cumberworth job we have the solid or rubble filled stone barn wall. So we've used a vapour and capillary open mineral which is made out of perlite and expanded volcanic rock. And it comes in a board section, which we then um, stick to the wall with adhesive and lime plasters over the top. With internal wall insulation, we have to be very careful. So we have three types of moisture we have to consider. It's rising damp in older buildings without damp proof courses rain-driven damp through the walls because the sandstone in this area particularly is quite porous and then what we call interstitial condensation which is the condensing of the internal moist air behind the insulation. Both our products here, Diathnite and Tectem, deal with this quite well. They're capillary and vapour open and actually breathe if you like as the original walls would have done. Triple glazed windows and doors are also another key element in our insulation strategy. Triple glazing also cuts out cold spots and drafts and adds the comfort of these buildings. A key element in our strategy is air tightness. We like to be able to draw a line completely round the building uh, continuously um, using different strategies for the roof, floor and walls. In our case here we've got the diathonite which is not only an insulator and plaster but it's airtight as well. In the ceilings we've got the intelligent intello membrane with Tescon tapes which we tape to the wall behind this diathonite. 
diacinite goes down right through the intermediate floor and then is taped to the concrete screed in the floor. For the air tightness strategy here at Cumberworth, we have taken the insulation, as we have on all of our jobs, through the intermediate floor. Now, the way we've done that is by taking the parallel joist, floor joist, against the wall and moved it in so that we can take this insulation strategy right the way through. So we actually sand and cement or parge that bit of the wall to join the plaster up for each floor. Um, and we also used a room sealed wood burning stove, which has its own designated supply pipe. So we, we don't have to have a separate vent. We measured the air tightness before we started work and it came in at 17 air changes. After all of the works that we've carried out, it, it is down to two. Another key element to these retrofit projects is to try and get continuity of insulation. In other words, minimising the thermal bridging through the insulation strategy. Some examples of this are where we've taken this wall insulation through the intermediate floors so that it's continuous from ground floor right up to the roof. Um, another example is the window reveals. We didn't want to take the thickness of wall insulation into the windows because it would have made the windows smaller. So we've used a special material called vacuum insulated panels. Another example is where we have to use steels to hold up floors and so forth, or ridge beams. Um, so we've got this cold bridge of a steel, which is the best conductor of heat. So we try and isolate it by surrounding it as it's built into the wall with a material called foam glass, which is recycled blown glass. It is structural, it can, in other words, it can take weight, but it's also an insulator. When you're improving the air tightness of a building in a retrofit, then you really need to start looking at ventilation and mainly for improving the air quality for inhabitants and also for the structure of the building to keep it healthy. In our radical retrofit projects, we've used mechanical ventilation with heat recovery. So the way that MVHR works is that you've got a lot of wet air and other pollutants from cooking and, and so on. So you've got a lot of heat in the air and you want to get rid of that air to get fresh air and dry air in but you, with it you're getting rid of all the heat so you want to take that wet air and put it through a heat exchanger so that it, it takes the moisture out and, and all the other pollutants out of the house but it swaps all the heat into the incoming air so that this is a heat exchanger and that's what that's the point of the MVHR unit that's what it does. In a retrofit situation it is always more difficult to find places for putting the ducts and putting the air handling unit and so on but we managed to find a way. We'll, we'll talk to the clients, we figure it out, and in the Radical Retrofit projects, we put it through the apex of the roof. It is important that all four principles are adopted when undertaking a retrofit. This will avoid the danger of unintended consequences, such as condensation, mould growth, and poor indoor air quality. As we've seen, all measures that we take for retrofit work together, so it's very important that we have a whole house plan. That is a plan of what we're going to do to refurbish the whole building, even if we don't manage to do it all at the same time. The place is far warmer than it ever was. It stays at a constant 20, 21, 22 degrees all year round, day and night. Obviously now there are no drafts. The air is always fresh and clean in here because of the MVHR system that pumps around air and filters it and, and heats the incoming air. So it's, it's a very, very different place indeed. We have a wide range of free resources on our website to help you start to plan your energy efficient refurbishment, including more detailed technical briefings on our radical retrofit projects at Lower Royd and Cumberworth and our Warmer Homes blogs and briefings.